Terry Barber is a best-selling author and founder of Lighthouse Catholic Media. Jesse Romero is a retired law enforcement officer, a former kickboxing champion with a master's degree in theology. And together, they share a passion for evangelization and PhDs in common sense. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. To join the show, call 888-526-2151. Here's Terry and Jesse. Soul Mighty Five today at Holy Mass. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Soul Mighty Five, read it. Wow, what a story. You know, St. Thomas Aquinas, he lived back in the 13th century. And uh, he was known as the angelic, known as the angelic doctor, known as the greatest theologian in the Catholic Church. He's now part of the community of saints, what we would call the the, the church uh, triumphant. Well, guess what? There's a beautiful story, big, big time, about about a Serbian abortion doctor. His name is Stojan Adasivic. He's he's from Serbia, which is still a communist country. And uh, this abortion doctor, he's managed to kill 48,000 children in utero in his 26 years as a purveyor of death. He says that he would do some, sometimes 35 abortions a day. Now, that's not the good news. No. The good news is this. That's all in the past. Dr. Stojan, uh, again, is right now is now one of Serbia's most important pro-life voices. Praise God. He's like... Uh, He's uh, like uh, our, uh, the Bernard doctor uh, that Terry Nathanson. went to. Bernard yeah, Nathanson. Doc, Dr. Bernard Nathanson. Terry went to jail with him. Terry knows him well. Uh, incredible conversion. But, but here's what happened. Here's essentially what happened. Now, of course, this Dr. Stojan, all the medical textbooks are, have, a, have a communist uh, you know, ideology where abortion, he said in his medical school, was simply the removal of a blob of tissue. And uh, he says that. Uh, as a result of his communist training, again, he just embraced the whole abor- uh, abortion ethic. But here's what happened. Here's the good, the good story, or the good news. He said he started having nightmares, all right? Started having nightmares. And in one of these nightmares, he says a, a guy appeared to him, and this guy that was dressed like a priest, uh, he was dressed in a black and white habit, and, and he appeared to him, and he told him that he was St. Thomas Aquinas. And he, he didn't even know who he was, and, right? Who's, who's no, that? He didn't. Who's that? Because of his communist training, all, all he's, ever, he's never heard of St. Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> and so that wasn't part of his curriculum as, as his communist uh, training. So he says that, uh, he says in this dream, there was this, a beautiful field full of children and young people playing and laughing from four years to about 24 years of age. But they ran away from him when they saw him because of, his, because of their fear of Dr. Stojan. Then all of a sudden, a man dressed in black and white come up to him, stared at him in silence. And uh, the dream was repeated night after night. And he'd wake up with a cold sweat. And so one night, Dr. Stojan, he asked the man in black in, the, in this frightening dream, who are you? He says, my name's St. Thomas of Aquinas. And uh, Dr. Stojan asked the nightly visitor, because he'd been, St. Thomas had been appearing night after night. He said, who are these children? St. Thomas said bluntly, he said, they are the ones you killed with your abortions. Wow. At that point, St- Dr. Stojan awoke up in shock and fear, and he said, I'm done. He decided that he would refuse to participate in any more abortions. Th- the story is this. For some people that say, oh, the saints are dead. They can't do nothing for you. You know what? There's too many stories like this in 2,000 years of Catholic tradition where the saints who are in Christ and alive because of Christ, they come and give a message here to somebody here on planet Earth. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray, pray for, for us. us. Wow, we got more good news. I'm going to tell a little later in the show about a little Brady uh, Kale from uh, Massachusetts. He's 10 years old. He's been collecting baseball cards. And when I tell you what he did to raise some money for a friend, you're going to like to hear this. But, you know, I have to clarify something. Jesse said a couple minutes ago I went to jail with uh, Bernard Nathanson. I think I should explain myself. Uh, I mean, we weren't caught stealing (laughs) something. You know, I said, wait a minute, love Jesse. You got to tell him the story. Here's what happened. Back in the late 80s, we had this Operation Rescue going where we would be nonviolent at a clinic and we would say, you know, the necessity law. We want to save a life. So we would break a law. 
and we just stood there arm to arm, and Dr. Bernard Nathanson had his arm around my arm, and I was like, wow, I was honored because I knew who he was. I had recorded him. And so when the police came, we got thrown into jail. So I had to clarify that. It wasn't like I was a, a thug, you know, breaking into houses. It was uh, because I was trying to stop unborn babies from being killed. At an abortion Terry house. went to jail for Jesus. Amen, brother. But here's the good news uh, about little Brady. Ten years old, he's been collecting baseball cards for since he was three. His little friend at school was having an operation because of cancer, and they needed funds. So he decided to sell his treasure, Right. His, all of his baseball cards, when, the, when people heard about this generous soul, little 10-year-old, people started giving him sports paraphernalia for him to sell to raise money for his friend. He raised over $13,000, okay? Now, you can't tell me. People say, oh, little kids are, are, are selfish. You know what? I, I, you know who, I, who put the blame on that? The parents. They taught him to be generous. So I just wanted to give that story so that at the dinner table tonight, you tell that story to your kids about a little 10-year-old kid selling his treasure to help his friend in his cancer operation. Here's another good story, a good news story before we get into some of the cultural issues. Yep. You know, you know people become racist because they're taught to hate. Exactly. Because I, I saw a beautiful example the other day. Uh, my daughter's here visiting, uh, you know, with her with her husband and her grand, my, my grandson. Mm -hmm. And we took him out to the playground over here in the local park. And my grandson, Sebastian, a cute little Hispanic baby. <laughs> uh, he's about one years old now. <laughs> and we, he was in the playground. And we're, I was just watching. My daughter was walking with him. And there was probably about four or five uh, little Caucasian kids from about three to about eight years old. Okay. <laughs> They saw my grandson. He was the smallest one there. He's one, and 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 the next the next oldest one was like three years old, sure. three, five, six. Seven. The three year old Caucasian kid. He looked at my grandson, and my daughter was calling him, "Papa, Papa, come over here, Papa." The this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I love I'm it. telling you, if I could have videoed this and sent it to the world's funniest videos, I'd I'd be making a lot of money. The three-year-old Caucasian baby walked up to my grandson, one-year-old Sebastian, Hispanic baby, <laughs> and, and he started, because he, he heard my daughter saying, Papa, Papa, he, he's, he raised his arms out in a gesture like, I want to hug you, and he's saying, Papa, Papa, <laughs> come over here. As me and my daughter saw this, we noticed that a baby they have to be taught to hate right. because automatically there's nothing but love and kindness that comes out of him. Amen. And then all the other babies in the playground turned around and looked at my, uh, my grandson, Sebastian, and started saying, Papa, Papa, <laughs> imitating. <I love laughs> imitating. They, they thought that was his name. They didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm just saying is, you know what? When I saw that in my mind, the first thing I thought about is what Jesus said. He said, in order for us to get to heaven, we must have faith like a child. And as I saw those five little Caucasian kids loving on my grandson, didn't even know him, didn't care that the color of his skin was a little darker. There was this pure, unadulterated love. I said, wow, that's a glimpse of heaven. You know, Jesse, that story reminds me of my own father when I was five years old. I went to Dodger Stadium. For those who don't know what Dodger Stadium, it's the big baseball park in L.A. And uh, it was the first time I saw an African-American man because I was in a white area. And so I said to my daddy, Daddy, why is that man's skin black? And my dad said, Terry, God made all the children black, white, uh, brown. They're all God's children, and uh, that's how he made them. And for a five-year-old kid, guess what? I got it. And that helped me not to be prejudiced because of my dad's example. And, Jesse, that example right there is going to tell people that's how you bring people up and children up. Because I had, I, my, I had friends that played ball with their African-American, never even thought of it. A Catholic priest married me. He was an African-American. Why? Because I was taught not to be prejudiced. I really believe that it's taught in the family, either good or bad. That's my take. Truth has no color. We're always saying it here on the yep. Terry and Jesse yep. show. Hey, going back to Dr. Stojan, I just want to mention something about Dr. Stojan, the uh, the pro-abortion uh, 
Serbian doctor who's now pro-life. When he, when he notified uh, the medical community in his hospital that he was no longer going to perform abortions, oh, yeah. the, co- the communist government, they came down hard on him, okay? Because he's in, he's in Yugoslavia. And, and so they started putting pressure on him, uh, the atheistic communist government, and they started making life very difficult for him because, again, if you're a physician in communist Yugoslavia, you can't refuse to perform an abortion. And so the, the, the government's reaction was very swift and severe. And, and Dr. Stojan says he was about to cave into the pressure because he needed money and a job. So he's about to start doing abortions again. And what happens? St. Thomas Aquinas appears again. Perfect. Great okay? story. And St. Thomas assures Dr. Stojan of his friendship. And he told Dr. Stojan that he will continue to inspire him. And that's all, Saint, that's all the doctor needed for him to rededicate himself to the pro-life movement. He's now known as the Bernard Nathanson of Yugoslavia. He shows the film The Silent Scream All Over. Terry, take uh, it away. It's awesome. And I want to give away Dr. Bernard Nathanson's Aborting America, plus 17 women shocked the world who have testimonies. If you're a pro-life Catholic, pro-life person, you'll want these as resources. Also, earlier in the week, for those who didn't hear, we're doing the How to Study the Bible with Scott Hahn since this is the first of the year. If you want a great series on how to teach you to study God's Word, Dr. Hahn, you can't get it any better. Call us at 877-526-2151. You can get Aborting America by Bernard Nathanson. Get a video of 17 women in Shocking the World. And don't forget Scott Hahn, How to Study the Bible. It's so important to know God's love letter. Dr. Hahn will do it. 877 526 2151. More in a moment. Back to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888 526 2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Did you know that there's a new poll that reveals that almost 90% of Americans surveyed and responded, they say that protecting religious freedom is a priority. And 80% of the respondents said that it's an immediate or an important priority to appoint Supreme Court justices who will interpret the Constitution as originally written and not according to what they think the Constitution means today, or what they would call an, e- an evolving Constitution. That's good news, because it seems, it seems to me that a lot of Americans are coming to their senses, and it seems to me as if a lot of people are starting to put on their moral thinking caps. And uh, yeah, this information was put out by a Supreme Court Knight Carl Anderson of the Knights of Columbus about this. Again, majority of Americans overwhelming uh, support for religious freedom, and uh, for, for Supreme Court justice who would uh, interpret the Constitution uh, uh, according to a strict constitutionalist uh, jurisprudence. That is good news. You know, here at the Terry and Jesse show, we give you a lot of good news, but we also have to talk about reality, some of the evils that are in our culture. We do. And so one of them is pornography. We've talked many times over the year uh, back on pornography, but right now, uh, we've got an article here that you can get it from our Terry and Jesse show dot com or Jesse Romero dot com. We have the articles there, but it's romance porn. More women are addicted than we think every year. Pornography tangles up millions of people right in the sticky spider webs. It rolls them up like helpless flies and sucks out their brains. What? Yes. Until they're pretty much the walking dead. Christians are not exempt. And we're finally starting to admit it. And we're starting to talk about a solution to this. Here it comes. 68% of young men, adult men, and 18% of women use porn at least once every week. 64% of Christian men and 15% of Christian women say they watch porn at least once a month. And men are more likely than, you know, 543% likely to look at porn than women. But here's the point. This article is going to cover something that I know, we, you know, everybody says, I don't want to talk about that. Can I tell you? Pornography is probably in your home, and you don't even know it, okay? Whether it's on the Internet, the phone, uh, vid- uh, the, uh, the television. And I would like to at least ask you, our listener, to listen to what this article has to say about this huge market for romance porn. And I'm talking about books. Jess, let me turn it over to you to finish up that, because that, that's a sick topic, but we got to cover it. Yeah, most people... 
you know, talk about the negative effects of pornography on men. And a lot of people think that pornography is mostly a male problem. But this article is basically saying that women are increasingly consuming pornography. And what they're doing, how are they doing it? Through romance novels. Yep. Okay? So this is, this is a huge segment of the pornography industry that affects women very powerfully as much as, as, much as the Internet affects men. Uh, there's a woman who this article calls the female Hugh Hefner. That's right. Her name is she. she her name is Meredith Wild, and basically she's uh, she's very successful in self publishing eBooks. And Meredith Wild, she's a 33 year old graphic designer turned author, makes millions of dollars each year from these self published fiction books on romance. And uh, in, in, in fact, uh, she considers herself an, an all American mom who who struck it rich, thanks to her talent about writing and marketing. But the point is this: the article basically says, is that many men are visually attracted, and that's how they succumb to pornography through the through the vision. What this article is saying, as a result of Mrs. Wild and many other women who are writing what they would call these you know these hot sexually kinky books about women's encounters and stuff uh in, in fact mrs wild she she says that uh i i just want to write wicked hot books yeah what this is doing the article says again it affects the woman's brain all these pornographic you know images through words yep she paints it a affects picture. a woman it yeah. affects a woman's brain that's right just like visual pornography affects a man's brain. So they're saying the same thing is happening as a result because women are painting these nude pictures in their imagination and it's having the same type of effect, negative effect, that it has on a man when a man is visually looking at these pornographic pictures. So they're calling Mrs. Wild uh, the female equivalent of Hugh Hefner. And uh, this article says she's a verbal drug pusher shoving words as potent as cocaine at her own gender and droves of women are clearly addicted. Now, let me just give you some statistics. She sold a total of 1.4 million copies of her book, and she has agreed to a 6.25 million advance for the next five books. Uh, she was getting $500,000 in royalties per month. I mean, she's making a lot of money, but again, you know, is it worth corrupting people? And I think of, I don't want to change gears, but I'll just give you an example there are m many people becoming millionaires because of legalized marijuana. Okay, it's the same thing. You're corrupting people, but you're going to make the money. So what's the what's the uh, the hook? It's hey, I'm I, you know I'm just writing books. I mean I'm just a person who knows how to graphically describe. And that's their problem if they get into trouble. Wrong. And I want to ask you, our listener, if you've had challenges with pornography, call us at eight 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 five two six two one five one because I I do have some resources. One of the resources I have is what Jesse did, Every Man's Battle for Pornography. You can call us at 877-526-2151. And that's a three-CD set that would help. But if you, I know you want to be anonymous, you're welcome to call because I want to reach out to people, men and women, to help them overcome these addictions. They're wicked addictions. That's why I tell everybody, read the Bible. Every time you're going to look at some pornography, say, I'm gonna, every time I do that, I'm going to go ahead and read my Bible. And discipline yourself to change the focus of your attention. Call us at 877-526-2151 if you want to get Scott Hans How to Study the Bible. Jesse, this is a concern. Uh, you travel a lot. I get women that are telling me they have problems with pornography now. Men, too. But this is this woman just started selling her books in, oh, in 14, just a couple, three years ago. And look at how it's mushroomed. So here again... We have to talk about a tough subject because we want to get people out of that addiction. I think that's why St. Paul reminds us over and over in the Bible, for example, in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Yeah. He says, do not be conformed to this world, mm. but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Yeah. Notice the renewal of your mind. In other words, this is where the battle against Satan is. Uh, is uh, is fought. Okay, if you're wondering about spiritual warfare, 
if, if you're saying, okay, Jess, where is the battle fought? Is it in my sexual organs? Is it in my bodily appetites? I'll tell you where the battle is fought. It starts in the mind. If you lose the battle in the mind, it will travel to the members of your body. That's why over and over again, St. Paul is always talking about the renewal of your mind. Because, you know, these books, these romance books that have bondage, sadism, masochism, and other things that I can't describe on Catholic radio, these things are these things come from the devil. These things come from the secular influence. And so the battle being waged right now with these romance novels on these women, Satan is trying to take control of their mind. Because if Satan can control your mind, he's also going to control your heart. And unless you renew your mind through a life of prayer, a life of virtue, and the practice of your faith, then you're going to be caught in, in this in this addictive, sinful lifestyle that's going to keep on spiraling. Well said. Before we go to anonymous, I just want to mention that more than 70 million people in the U.S. alone read at least one romance novel per year, and most of them read many more. So here's my question. Why can't we read the Bible? I, again, you love to read? Read God's love letter. And as I said to you earlier, the Scott Hahn 4 CD set on how to study the Bible is a New Year's resolution. Just go ahead and pick it up and uh, call 877-526-215. And I want to mention something for also for the wives. Give your husband a gift. Send him to the Catholic Men's Fellowship Conference if they're in L.A. here at the Hacienda Heights St. John Vianney, it's March 11th. Uh, you can go by just ke- checking on the Internet, Catholic Men's Fellowship. Jesse and myself will be there, and I know we're going to be talking about a lot of those issues. Also, don't forget, we have the Spiritual Warfare Conference coming up. This is February 25th at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina. At the, uh, well, every year we do it. It's always you know sold out. But I would encourage you to get your ticket now so that you don't get locked out because we can only put about three, 320 people in our church. Call 877-526-2151. I'm going to be Friday at Azusa at St. Francis of Rome Church, power preaching on evangelization. Jesse, where are you going to be this weekend? I'm going to be at St. Rose of Lima in Paso Robles Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Central California Marian Eucharistic Conference. And then next Saturday, I'll be at the Spokane, Washington Band of Brothers Men's Conference. That's January 28th at St. Thomas More Catholic Church. For more information, just go to my website, jesseromero.com, for details. And if you want Jess to come to your parish, go to that website, jesseromero.com. If you'd like me to come and speak at your parish on evangelization, I would be honored to do that. You just call 877 877- Five two six two one five one. Also, the end of the month, I'm going to be at St. John's Seminary. Can you believe that, folks? I'm going to be chatting <laughs> with all the seminarians on evangelization. And are you ready? The day after that, I'm going to be speaking to 60 uh, movie star people out at uh, Good Shepherd Parish. I want to come to your parish. Call me at 877-526-2151. Pick up Scott Hahn's CD set, How to Study the Bible, or any of the pro-life material, Aborting America by Dr. Bernard Nathanson. We'd love to have you hand this material out. That's how you're evangelizing. 877-526-2151. More in a moment. We'll take Anonymous next. Back to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. We're talking about the effects of romance novels that are pornographic, really. We uh, There's the female Hugh Hefner. Her name, her name is Meredith Wilde. She's made a ton of money out of these romance novels, and she admits that she wants to make these things very sensual, very sexual. She says, quote, I just want to write wicked hot books. And apparently there's a big market for that. Uh, And statistics about pornography uh, uh, often seem to be testing for whether women are behaving like men. And these statistics confirm that women, again, are less attracted to the visual, but they are more attracted 
to what's between the covers of a book. Uh, there's another lady by the name of Lori Kane. She's a producer of a documentary film called Love Between the Covers. She says, quote, more than 70 million people in the USA alone read at least one romance novel per year. And most of them read many more. Yep. And a U.S. census for 2015, then we'll go to the phone lines, it shows that there are 100 million women between 18 and 64 years old in the U.S., okay, that are reading literary Sad. pornography. Let's, Let, go to the phone. let's go to Anonymous. Anonymous, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Hello, Anonymous. Thank you, Terry, Jesse. God bless yes. you. Go ahead. You're I, on the air. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to reiterate that not only is it the the word, the books that are an issue, but even soap, op soap operas. Amen. Yeah. Well, you we, made a good point. I think that yeah. I they're agree. not that bad. And really, they are. Um, my parish priest brought it to the attention of our congregation. God and bless him. The one day that he said it wasn't a good thing. I stopped watching cold. See, you just needed I have been direction. watching for good job. Twenty years, you wow. know. I've been brought up watching them, you know, in college and hey. and afterwards, and you know, I just changed the channel or or just turned it off, really. God love and you. No, that's great. I'm it was no longer uh, uh, something that I'd go back to. Thank I you, refused. Jesus. Oh, I'm so happy to have you call. You see, it can be done, can it? Right? You can do it. It sure is. It's wow. Exactly. You have to put your mind to it. Amen. And God yes. bless you and for sharing that, because that yeah. should inspire others to do likewise. Jess is probably going to give you a scripture verse. I just know my brother Jess. Watch. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it comes. For, thank you, Anonymous. <laughs> uh, God bless you for your phone call and, and, and for your witness. Amen. But, but this is exactly the way the devil attacks us, and, and it's also done through television, just yeah. like Anonymous said. Not, not just through a book, a romance book, a porn. It's also done through television. Yep. Here's the strategy of Satan. Okay, grab your Bible if you want to know. Okay, how does Satan attack us? Here it is. One Bible verse that lays it all out. 1 John 2.15, the Bible says this, quote, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, here it is, number one, the lust of the flesh. Number two, the lust of the eyes. And number three, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world is passing away and the lust of it. So that's a threefold attack by Satan on the human person because he wants to take us all to hell. The threefold attack is right here in 1 John 2.15. He attacks our flesh, our fallen nature. He attacks our eyes, and he also attacks our ego, our pride. And again, uh, soft porn uh, romance novels or hardcore steamy romance novels or uh, these a lot of in, in Spanish, they call them novelas. These television series, that that these uh, soap operas that have again fornication, adultery, jumping in from one bedroom scene to another, all these things are meant to just titillate your disordered passions. Well That's said. exactly. And the Catholic Church used to say before Vatican II, you would hear the church would call that type of literature impious reading, and the church has always called us to stay away from impious reading because it's dangerous to our soul. Yeah, we call it the custody of the eyes. Okay, let's go to Renee uh, out in Orange. We've got our phone lines are lit up because this is a topic I'm sure everyone realizes it's a serious topic. If you want to join in on the conversation, our number is 888-526-2151. Renee in Orange, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. Hey, Terry and Jesse, can you hear me? I can hear you fine, brother. What's on your mind? Great, great. My name is Renee with uh, the Brotherhood of St. Distance. How are you doing there, Brother Jess? <laughs> I'm great, bro, and I'm a lifetime member. <laughs> go ahead, bro. Oh, so, there you go. There you go. Anyways, uh, one of the many things we know that we need to to uh, to survive as human beings are three things. It's we need to eat, we need to sleep, and we need to drink water. You deprive your body of one of them, eventually you will die. Plain and simple, cut and dry. 
this is a necessity we need. At the Brotherhood of St. Dismas, just like you know, Jeff, we're supposed to uh, fast once a week. If you're able to deprive your body from eating that one, that one day a week and master that, you'll, a, you'll be able to, to deprive, if you will, of any type of addiction that you have, whether it's pornography, drinking, whatever it might be, whatever it might be, gambling. And that's one thing that the, that the Brotherhood teaches there. Great. Is that once you, once you're able to do that, then you're able to master any type of addictions you have. And I just want to give you guys thanks, heads Renee. Up on that one. Appreciate it, Renee. Let me let me put up let me put a plug for the Brotherhood of Saint Dismas, which started in Orange County. It's a Catholic men's group that really focuses on penance, on calling men to know their faith. Number one, to be properly catechized, but also to a life of prayer and penance. I'm a lifetime member. When I was in California, I would attend the meetings every single week. Very solid. It's uh, the spiritual directors are the Norbertine fathers. And uh, Renee, thanks for calling. Thanks, You're right. In, in, in the brotherhood, we always promote, if you can, of the St. Thomas Aquinas teaches that of the seven deadly sins, he says the worst of the, of the seven is pride, mm-hmm. and the least of the seven deadly sins is gluttony. And so the spiritual writers of the church say that if you can... S- practice on slain gluttony now you're going to be able to master the other capital sins if you can ma- if you can't master gluttony you're going to have a hard time mastering the other six so renee thanks a lot for that good spiritual advice from the spiritual writers of the church yeah it comes down to discipline in life isn't that amazing whether you want to be a wrestler a baseball player discipline comes into play and when you're living the faith you got to be able to discipline yourself I'm going to go to Matt Arnold, our good friend, who, who fills in with the, our show, because uh, I'm going to put him at the top of the line. Matt Arnold, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Terry. Hey, Jess. How's it going? We're doing great, buddy. Excellent, How about yourself? brother. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you guys, terrific topic. Okay. Uh, I was just, I'm, I'm chauffeuring my daughter around. She's yeah. given music lessons this morning, and great. I, I uh, was listening to the program. It's awesome. There's two things I wanted to sure. jump in. First off, Anonymous has it right. There's an awful lot of, of hidden pornography, even in like sitcoms and, and so forth. A lot of suggestive things, even shows that don't have explicit sexual content, uh, are planting those seeds in your mind. And as Jesse pointed out, St. Paul tells us, even our Lord, mm-hmm. uh, that that's where the sin begins, right, is in the mind and Amen. before it uh, turns to action. The second thing is, uh, I wanted to point out that there's really a double standard when it comes to pornography regarding men and women. I think most people are are willing to say that pornography is a bad thing, although, you know, we indulge in it sometimes even in these hidden ways, or more explicitly like a, a program like Game of Thrones or whatever. But, but people can recognize that. And yet, when uh, that book Fifty Shades of Grey came out, yep. explicitly pornographic uh, reading, aimed at women, sold 100 million copies, and that lady was celebrated and not good, condemned. Good point. Excellent point. Yep. And so I think that, you know, we have, we have a real thing in our society where it's like when men do it, it's bad, but when women do it, somehow it's liberating because it's something that, that men have traditionally done, even though it's, you know, kind of a reprehensible thing. Matt, let me ask you a so question. I just wanted to throw but, in be, be, Before you go, I want to ask you one quick question because we're going to have a break. Do you think that sure. uh, reason is, is because uh, there's a little bit of this feminism aspect that if a man can do it, a woman can do it? Do you think that plays into it? Absolutely. I, I, I think that absolutely plays into it, okay. that it, that um, <clears throat> that they would celebrate uh, uh, the the uh, uh, adoption of male vices as much as male virtues. Yep, great. Matt, I'll let you get back with your daughter. Thanks for joining us here at the Terry and Jesse Show. God love you, Hey, brother. thanks for all the good work, you guys. God bless you. Thanks, thanks Matt. Matt. God bless you, partner. Before we go to our break, we've got Anonymous. We've got several people on it. We want to get to your calls, but I just want to encourage you. If you want to get a three-CD set on this topic of pornography, Every Man's Battle, Jess Romero did it for St. Joe years ago, and he gives all the great resources for you to fight it. You can get it by calling 877-526-2151. That's our number, the same number you can get How to Study the Bible with Dr. Scott Hahn. We want to help you overcome any vice. And here at the Terry and Jesse Show, if you notice the balance we have, we tell you good news, don't we? But we also tackle some tough issues that need to be tackled with a Catholic mindset. 
That's all we're doing. It's not Jesse Romero's personal opinion. It's not my opinion. What does our Lord teach through his bride, the church? That's what you're going to get here at the Terry and Jesse Show. As a matter of fact, the Spiritual Warfare Conference coming up February 25th, Jess Romero is going to be giving some talks, at least three of them, brand new talks on spiritual warfare. I'd like you to consider going. Also, David Arias, who's a former Satanist, he's going to give his conversion story. We're going to have Father John Struso there. He's 51 years a priest. I'll be there to moderate it all. We'd love to have you come. Go ahead and call us to register, 877 877- 526-2151. If you want to go online to catholicrc.org, print the flyer out, put it in the back of your church. We want you to come because you know what we want you to do? We want you to get to heaven. That's what we're all about. We're not here to try and sell you something that you're only going to have for here. We want to give you the tools so that your relationship with Jesus Christ will be so strong that when, when you die, you'll have sanctifying grace and you'll get to heaven. Again, call us at 877-526-2151. If you want to join in on the conversation, that number is different. 888-526-2151. Back in a moment. This is Dr. Scott Hahn, and you are listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. We're talking about having mastery, self-mastery. Exactly. In light of this article that's talking about uh, f- female romance novels, it's a form of pornography. In fact, I think most people probably know about the most, uh, the most groundbreaking pornographic uh, romance book written called Fifty Shades of Grey. Yep. It's apparently, it's a trilogy. Uh, and according to uh, an article written by The Atlantic, these books, Fifty Shades of Grey, basically show it's a condensed version for uh, it shows bondage dominance submission sadism and masochism in other words it's 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 violence mixed in with sexual intimacy crazy and and this this is a troubling fantasy in our american culture because think about it one in five women in, a, in, in our culture are raped within their lifetime and so when you put this type of literature in the in the hands of a man or a woman these types of sexual fantasies this is dangerous and again that's why we have to go back to what saint paul talks about he says we're called to renew our mind let's go and let's hear what you have to say about this topic yeah we've got so many calls jeremy and walnut creek welcome to the terry and jesse show hey guys thank you for taking my call i just want to say i'm a recent convert to the catholic church and i've sort of been on Welcome. Both sides of this issue. Okay. Like, uh, bef- before I became Catholic, I-, I didn't honestly see what was really the matter with this. But as I've grown in uh, spiritual excellence, I don't know what you want to call it, you know, yeah. it started to disgust me. And I just wanted to say two things. First of all, say your rosary, because that helps. If you want help with this, nothing better you can do than say your rosary. And second, those who are on the other side, aren't necessarily, are, are blind to the fact that it's bad, possibly. Or at least some of them are, because I know, I know I was. On some level I knew in, in my conscience, mm-hmm. but that was obscured by, I guess, my faulty intellect. I don't know what you want to call it. No, it makes sense. It. makes sense, Jeremy. That you're, you're a good example of when the light was given to you, you could see the truth, but you see, grace wasn't working before you came into the church. That's my take. I think your eyes were opened. Yes. Yep. And what you're saying, Jeremy's right. What you're saying is right in the Bible in Second Corinthians four four. The Bible says, "In their case, Satan, the god of this world, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ." So there's there's again some satanic. Uh, uh, dimension to Absolutely. to the spiritual blindness, but nonetheless we have free will. We can break these chains uh, when we open our heart to Jesus Christ and walk in grace. Jeremy, welcome to the Catholic Church. We're glad you're listening to Immaculate Heart Radio. Keep up the good work, and we're glad to have you aboard, brother. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good day. You betcha. Sandra in San Lorenzo, California. Welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. Thanks for your patience. Thank you. Thank you for uh, talking to Terry and Jesse. I just want to say thank you for all the information that you guys provide. 
I have been able to have a better relationship, and I just wanted to say thank you to both of you guys. <laughs> oh, well, God love you, Sandra. That's all you have to say. It's thank, a blessing. Thank, hey, it's hey, can a I blessing. Say, I'm so excited. <laughs> we're excited. You're excited. Thank you, Jesus, because any good we do comes from God, and we thank him for it, Sandra. You keep telling thank people you. to tune just, in. I'm so excited. This is the best uh, best present that I get because today is my birthday. And I just wanted to say thank you so much that I was able to communicate with you guys. I just wanted to thank you so much all right. for all the information that you guys provide. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra. I'd love you. You know what, Sandra? We appreciate that. Anonymous in Orange County, you've been waiting so long, and we still have a couple minutes. So, Anonymous, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Go ahead, Anonymous. Hello? Yes, you're on the air. That It was a oh, long wait. Sorry, but I hope it was worth air. it. I, you're on the air <laughs> with two guys that love Jesus and Mary. Go ahead. Amen. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for bringing this up because I think a lot of women, um, I think your caller, Matt, brought a lot of points that I wanted to say. Sure. Women don't realize that this is pornography. And what happens is women being so emotional, I think they start to detach from their husbands. And I've seen it happen. So I think it's you, they have to be very careful because they start being dissatisfied with their husband because they have this fantasy uh, of what I think you know they've built in their head. And so I think it's really important for women to realize this is pornography as well. Wow, you're insightful. I, I'm wow. I'm blown away by your e comments. E Yes. You're absolutely right, and I'll say it happens to men also, where they become dissatisfied with their wife, and wives become dissatisfied with their husbands. Both ways. I'll tell you what, because none of us can meet up to the physical standards of what these images portray. Because again, th this is fiction, uh, or, or these are airbrushed women, or computerized, digital, digitally perfected women, and so again, this paints a. Th there's an unrealistic expectation that the world puts upon the, your spouse when you, when you start becoming addicted to this type of pornography. And again, there's, there's really two ways of looking at women, and, and there's two ways of looking at men. There's the world's way, the way the world basically reduces people. The, the world teaches you to reduce, reduce the opposite sex to body parts, okay? That, that's, that's what pornography is. The reduction of the human person to its composite body parts. All you do is isolate the person to their body parts. That's the secular view of, 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 of the opposite sex. And what's in it for me? How can, how can I derive pleasure and gain pleasure from this person? The Christian view of the opposite sex is the opposite sex was is beautiful because they're made by God or handsome and they're made in the image and likeness of God. They have an eternal soul and I as a baptized Catholic man don't want to lead anybody into mortal sin and any Catholic baptized woman should not want to lead any men into mortal sin. So we watch the way we dress, we watch the way we talk and we watch our behavior. There's a, a fundamental difference in the way we view the opposite sex Christianity and the secular humanist. And Jesse, I gotta think of Father Brian Milady did a series on the theology of the body from Saint Pope John Paul II. It's a 13 week course, Anonymous, but I have it on audio CD. If someone really wants to understand the theology of the body by Saint John Paul, he's the best. He's at the top of the food chain when that comes. So if anybody wants it, they can call me at 877. 5262151 after the show cuz the girls upstairs don't know I'm telling them telling everybody this but I felt compelled because if you want to understand the catholic position on sexuality St. John Paul II's got it down with his theology of the body and now not only that you can get how to study the bible by Dr. Scott Hahn I'm giving a bunch of stuff away if you just tuned in at the end of the show you can still listen to this show by going to catholicrc.org are going to the Terry and Jesse show, and you can re-listen to this show. If you want audio CDs of today's show, we had a lot of good information on this topic. Call us at 877-526-2151. We're excited to be with you every day here at the Terry and Jesse show. Have you noticed what we did, everybody? Mm -hmm. In one hour, we inspired you with wonderful stories that are generous souls coming to Christ, but we also tackled a very tough topic. But you know what we did? We gave you Christ's mind on this topic. So I just want to thank you for coming to our show. We still got more calls, but go ahead, Jess, before we take the next call. Here's one Bible verse I think that's going to really bring a lot of clarity to this topic. Because people, somebody could say, some legalist could say, 
There's no Bible verse that says you can't read romance novels. You and Terry are fundamentalists. <laughs> You're right. There is no Bible verse that says you can't read romance novels. Yeah. And, and there's no Bible verse that says you can't watch pornography on the Internet either. In other words, that's a fundamental mistake by thinking that the Bible answers all the questions. It doesn't. The Bible was not intended to answer every single question in life. That's why we have the church. The church is the living voice of Christ, and the magisterium continually teaches us what's right and what's wrong. And here's a Bible verse, basically, that g gives moral clarity. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. When you think about the issues, is this right, this is wrong? Hmm, there's not a Bible verse. Here's a Bible verse that answers that. Quote, all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. Amen. All things are lawful, but not all things will build me up. So what does that mean? You're right. There is no Bible verse that says you can't watch, you can't read a, a, a romance novels. But look at what St. Paul says. Is reading romance novels, is it going to build you up spiritually? Is reading romance novels, is it going to help you spiritually? Is it going to get you no, holier? No way. Is it going to draw you closer to God? Those are the questions you have to Amen. ask Amen. when we get into these into these topics of there is no Bible verse about this topic. There doesn't have to be. We always have to go to 1 Corinthians 10, 23 and ask ourselves, is this practice going to make me holier, going to draw me closer to God? Is it going to build me up? Is it going to help my soul? That 1 Corinthians 10, 23 answers any question you may have about life. Well said, Jesse. And I just want to remind all us married couples Bishop Sheen, in his book, Three to Get Married, said, Your love for your wife will not last because you're strong, dude. Your love will last because you have the power to renew it. Renew those marriage vows often, and you won't be tired of your wife. I guarantee it. That's my suggestion. Number two, here at the Terry and Jesse Show, ask Jesus Christ for more faith every day. You're not going to overcome the addictions without asking more faith from Jesus Christ because your faith has to be strong, and it won't be unless you ask for it. So promise me, everyone. Ask Jesus Christ for more faith. Victor, we only have a second here, but go on for a second. Go ahead, Vic. Ch Chino Hills, go ahead, brother. What's on your mind? Oh, I think Victor had to wait. I just want to yeah. ask uh, Jesse if he could say a special prayer for my mother. She Excellent. turned 73 yesterday, and my daughter turned 18 yesterday, too. Right. And I just want to thank you guys. You guys are showing the faith to me. And uh, my mom's real happy. I've been following you guys for the past couple of months now, and uh, I can oh. honestly say my life has gone for the better. Jesse, if you could please say a special prayer for my mother and my daughter. Heavenly, who turned 73 Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Victor's mother and, and his daughter. We pray, Lord, that you bless them. Keep them safe. Shine your face upon them. Give them healing of, bo of body, mind, and soul. We pray this in Jesus' name through Mary's intercession. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Don't forget, you can call me, 877-526-215. And after the show, pick up those CDs on the theology of the body or how to study the Bible or anything we offer today. We want you to be a radioactive Catholic. Call us, 877-526-215. Or go online to catholicrc.com. God love you.